Every time I find myself in this position, I am just thrilled from the marrow of my being to the extent of my consciousness because it means I'm sharing the platform with my heartstring. <laughs> oh, Pastor Reverend John Scott, who is the embodiment of woe. He is himself a world of wonder. And so I ask you to greet him as only he can be greeted with robust applause, hailing the wondrousness that he is. I give you Reverend John Scott. <laughs> I've never been called a heartstring by anybody but Sharon. Isn't that just lovely? My friends, good morning and a joy to add my own words of welcome. I love the idea of being God's acorn and not a corn on God's foot giving him, you know. Well. Special welcome too to those who join us in consciousness and who listen to us on the World Wide Web and watch us on YouTube. Uh, Welcome, welcome, welcome. The recent Centers for Spiritual Living Wow Conference in Orlando, Florida, which I was privileged to co-chair with Reverend Dr. Michelle Medrano, was designed to offer our laity, practitioners, and ministers an opportunity to awaken, to connect, and to explore with each other how our teaching can have a greater impact on the world. And from the feedback we've been getting, it seems to have been a, a real success. And as you know, our center and Jamaica was well represented. Reverend Michael Record and his charming wife Elaine, Carol Charlton, Judy Grant, Tony Henry, Jennifer Williams, Noel Chisholm, Vilma Richards, and Sharon Thomas and Dawn Williams represented the Temple of Light at the WOW conference. We were the WOW at the conference. I think I can say without fear of contradiction that our Jamaican group contributed significantly to the WOW in Orlando. And when I say our Jamaican group, I'm including those of you who gathered here on the Sunday evening of the opening to watch the live streaming of that ceremony. I don't know if you could hear us. Uh, could you? Yeah, we made a noise, a joyful noise. And I could literally feel, because there's no absence in the one presence, I could feel the Temple of Light love and energy just enfold me as I walked onto the stage. And it helped my knees not to, to make too loud a noise, a creaking. I've titled today's encouragement, as I call my Sunday messages, You Are the Wow in a World of Wonder. And I'd like to begin by asking Tony Henry, Jennifer Williams, and Sharon Thomas to share with you a little of how they experienced the Week of Wonder in Orlando. I begin with Tony, who was my roommate and a real tower of strength to me. Tony? Hi, morning, everyone. Hi, Tony. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this morning, as I strung together my highlights from the WOW 2014 convention, this thought came to me. The relative should not necessarily be the sole space from which to shape one's perspective. And here's the reason why. In my paradigm, the world of business, conventions are usually all about networking, new technologies, opportunities to see how your company measures up against others in the world, possibilities to showcase your products and services, and hopefully to learn many things new. You see, for me, a convention was primarily centered around the energies of rivalry and superiority, and was in contradiction to my personal brand of spirituality. And that's not all. On top of this framework in my mind, I added yet another box, a box filled with my subconscious perception of a Silamar. In my mind's eye, I pictured a Silamar as a gathering of slightly off-centered 60s love power radicals all floating around happily on two billion acres of forest clad solely in goddess wear and waving bands. Not exactly my scene. 
The only non sequitur in my extremely fertile imaginings were Noel and Vilma, both of whom I just couldn't envisage wearing frothy leisure, leisure wear while bartering for accessories at the high-end jewelry stores. I mean, they are just about as sane as I am, and they love the Silamar. I just couldn't figure out what this convention buzz was all about. So I made up my mind and decided to go to the convention and, one, support Reverend John in his role as co-chair, experience Disneyland as two, and three, to have a great time. At the very beginning of, our, of the convention, our spiritual lever, leader, Reverend Dr. Ken Gordon, told us in his message of oneness, and I paraphrase, that the only way to truly create a world that works for everyone, and for those of you who do not know, that's our organization's mission, the only way to truly create a world that works for everyone is to look beyond the differences and inconsistencies between religions and to find the synergies, because it is on the common ground that we can best make real our vision. That was my first of many woes as it suggested to me that the vision is greater than CSL. Therefore, it is greater than our own boxes, including mine, and even our borders. Brothers and sisters, the WOW Centers for Spiritual Living 2014 convention shifted my perceptions. There was so much on offer, yoga, inspiring messages, insights, sharing, great music. I was even on a choir. Mr. Dexter, I had to represent. There were like about five or more simultaneous workshops at any one time. I had to seriously consider the opportunity costs between choosing a workshop on radical relationships or spirituality in business. Hmm. There was a body room with Reiki and massage, a workshop on video broadcasting for your centers, books, DVDs, an iPad giveaway, and even access to the Disney theme park of your choice, plus discounted pricing to Cirque du Soleil. It was truly a wow experience. I listened as Bishop Yvette Flunder of the Fellowship of, Affir of Affirming Ministries said what was for me the wow statement of the convention. She said, never for the sake of tranquility or acceptance deny the authenticity of your journey. Yes. My brothers and sisters, I have learned something very pivotal at the WOW Convention. I had learned that my membership here at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living represents something even greater than learning about my true identity or just to thoughtfully commune with all you beautiful people. I discovered that I am a part of a movement a movement centered on awakening humanity to its spiritual magnificence. A movement that promises to create a world that works for everyone. And I have decided to consciously, in the, authentic in the authenticity of my journey, follow that road. For as we know, through diligence, the goal is sure to be attained by all. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for allowing me to share. He's not an acorn, he's the whole tree. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Next, we'll hear from Jennifer Williams, who was chosen by the chair of the Centers for Spiritual Living Practitioner Council to do the opening treatment at the conference's gala event, the Thursday evening banquet. I can tell you, in Jennifer's case, the WOW stands for Woman of Wonder in a stunning black and red outfit as she delivered words of wonder in a magnificent treatment. Jennifer. Good morning, friends. Good morning, Jen. And yes, that was the wow of the convention, okay? So maybe we should start there because I think that's where Reverend John would like me to begin. Um, for me, that experience, I have been to Asilomar twice, so going to this convention was, but the, what was different was I was now going as a practitioner. 
So for me, it made, I mean, a whole lot of difference. There was an activity of uh, initiation for practitioners. We had a council meeting, and there was a ceremony performed that they had a lighting of candles, and they asked us all to come forward at different times, practitioners who were new, who were in there for five, 10. There were practitioners there for 30 years. So it spoke to the fact that this body that I now belong to was a group that held the consciousness throughout the, con the convention and how, much, how important a role that we play in this organization. Um, importantly, too, I volunteered to be a roving practitioner. And what that meant was that I would uh, wear a scarf, a uh, colored scarf, and I was singled out by anybody. I could Not be stopped. <laughs> Not just a <laughs> scarf. <laughs> Uh, okay, Reverend John, yes, not just a scarf, but yes, you were identified by a yellow scarf, a golden scarf that you'd wear, and anyone could stop you at any time to ask for treatment, and that too was a very different kind of experience, because the first day I volunteered, I was just picking up the scarf when a young man approached me right there at the desk, and uh, we, I was in the treatment room, and he said I'd like a treatment, and I thought, wow, I haven't even put the scarf on yet, but you're called to duty, and you, you rise to the occasion. And I found that during that week, that young man kept, you know, at every occasion that he could see me after he was just, you know, thrilled at, I don't know, I, I think it was the treatment. <laughs> anyway, any, anyway, wow, 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 wow. And we haven't even gotten to the nice part as yet, yes. There is more to come. So that was one experience. Yes, there's more to come. Um, in the form of, and this was before the dress, the red and black wow dress, okay? Um, another wow experience was just walking the grounds. I need to let you know that that resort really, really brought you close to nature. And I had three experiences with nature that day, um, that week. On one, one morning walking down, and let me tell you, um, they contributed to my cardiovascular health. If I'm looking healthier, it's because my room was miles away across the resort. I was coming down the path one morning, and there was a little baby turtle trying to get across the path. And he was taking his own time, and I'm hustling and bustling, and I stopped and I thought, you know, really, why are you hurrying? Look at this turtle. I, I don't know where it came from, but he was just taking his own time. And then I saw two guys trying to take a picture of the turtle and deciding which end was the head. And I thought, people. <laughs> so, um, and that was one. And another morning, I saw two ducks on the lake. And I, it related to a relationship because there it was. One duck was just sitting up serene on the lake and observing while there was one going in and out, turning bottoms up, and you kept wondering, what was he trying to do? So I assumed that was the male trying to impress the female. And I thought, you know, going to all that extent, and she wasn't moved. So I thought, okay, I should hold my composure. So my lessons were many, but um, I know that Sharon is yet to come. So I will tell you about the wow experience of that particular night being asked to do that opening treatment at the banquet, the gala banquet. And for me, um, you know, they upped the ante when they told me that was the night I was giving the treatment because I thought I was just doing an opening session at one of the morning or evening sessions. So then I thought, gala banquet. So you had to find a dress, you had to have everything just right, and you had to go up in front of 500 pairs of eyes looking up at you when you, when you took the stage. And I don't know much about production and what goes on behind the scenes. So when I got backstage that night, and I think she's a reverend, yes. Sunshine. Reverend Sunshine says, okay, you know, the musicians are going to do three songs, and you're going to go in just at the last song, and she's queuing me up and all of that. And I'm thinking, okay, here we go. Make sure you don't stumble, because there are some steps leading up to, this, to this, the, the stage. And I got to the point where she said, okay, now you can stand, because I was sitting down just to compose myself. And um, earlier that day, Reverend John had treated with me, and I knew I was prayed up, because I'd asked everybody in the contingent to pray for me, you know, just to give me the courage to go up there. <laughs> standing in front of 500 pairs of eyes is, is so much different from standing in front of my temple family. So when I got up to the podium that night, yes, in my red and black dress, I started, it was, it was amazing about synchronicity and how this mind worked. The musician ended with a song that said, there's only one. Mm -hmm. And I opened my treatment with that very line, there's only one. And at the time I took that podium, 
the waiters had started serving. So there was a hustle and a bustle in the room, and everything was you know, a little bit noisy, and as if they had not recognized I'd started treating. But I tell you, this teaching works. By the time I got to the line that says, one presence, one power, one infinite intelligence, the hush that came over that room, you could have felt it. And it was only a two minute treatment. I can tell you that it wasn't longer. You were told no longer than two minutes. And in that two minute, the space, I don't know. I don't remember what else I said. I just know that I went within and that this power that is greater than who I am spoke through me. And when I came off that podium that night, I heard from the audience a voice that says, that was good, Jennifer. And I thought, oh dear, Reverend Harry Morgan Moses, another fan that I found. <laughs> and that's another story, okay, at another time. But yes, and I think that having done that experience, the highest compliment I got outside of all who told me I'd done well at doing that treatment was from Dr. Jane Ryder. And she said to me that, you know, two things. She said, one, Reverend John was very brave. He took a chance on a newly licensed practitioner. And I thought, well, yes, um, my minister knows that we've been doing this teaching for years with, in treating. So he was confident that I could deliver. And then she said, but you know what was most important? She said, I said, God is in you because the hush that fell over that room that night. So I left the convention with that feeling, knowing that I do have an important role and that this teaching continues to inspire me and to inspire everyone with whom I come in contact. And so that was my wow experience. Thank you for sharing and for giving me the opportunity. Thank you, Jen. Um, she didn't tell you that the person who said that was a fabulous treatment is a plastic surgeon. <laughs> I have visions of free lipo. <laughs> Before I ask Sharon to share, would anybody else who was on the, on the trip like to share for two minutes their wow experience? Okay. Um, Sharon, who is going to share with you now, volunteered to do the closing affirmative prayer at one of the workshops. And can you guess how she began? Anybody? Take three deep centering breaths. And then her treatment inspired the group with the wisdom of wonder. Let us hear the how of Sharon's wow. Thank you, Reverend John. Uh, <clears throat> I had a wow experience in Orlando at the CSL convention on Tuesday, February 18th. The conference started the Sunday. This was a Tuesday. I was sitting on the patio outside the convention center when I saw a white egret walking a few feet away. It was walking normally, but then I noticed that although there was nothing remarkable about the gait, that its left foot was like this, but its right foot was pointed back ways. Um, and I suspect that at some point it had been broken. I watched the egret as it walked towards me and, and kept watching it as it passed me and continued along the patio. And then it flew onto the railing which surrounded the lake and landed gracefully on both feet. It groomed itself with one leg and then the other, always maintaining perfect balance on the supporting leg and foot. And I noticed that the foot that was turned backwards was ideally suited uh, for scratching the egret's throat, you know, not like this, but like this, and that it used that foot primarily for that purpose. In observing the egret, I was wowed by two realizations. Firstly, that Regardless of what happens to our physical form, the divine creative impulse which we call life always expresses perfectly through us. When we make no judgments about our experiences, when we don't label them good or bad, but simply allow life to express through us unimpeded. And in this way, life continues to bless us with perfect beingness, and we can enjoy each rich moment of living as it comes. My second wall was the reminder that 
while we acknowledge the past and allow its lessons to serve us, and um, because it has brought us to the point where we are in our lives, and while we anticipate the future and the potential that it holds, life is lived and enjoyed in the present moment, just being here now, just being ourselves. Wow. Thank you. Thank you all for sharing. It, there were many wow moments. It began for me back in May 2013 when our organizing committee met in Orlando to begin planning in earnest. And how the, the, the Census for Spiritual Living um, does this is in 2013, my co-chair and I for this year understudied that year's co-chairs. Then we are co-chair this year, and next year we will mentor uh, the co-chairs for next year. So you actually have a, you know, a period of being mentored, then you do the chairing, then you mentor the next, the next team. And our, our team met in May in Orlando at the, at the site, and our first agenda item was a visioning session. And it is out of this deep listening to spirit that the ideas for the conference were birthed. As we opened our eyes at the end of the visioning experience, several of us exclaimed simultaneously, wow. And so the name for the conference just happened. And we began then to find words to fit the acronym. It will be a week of wonder. Dynamic speakers would share words of wonder. And together, we, we would co-create a world of wonder with science of mind spreading the wisdom of wonder, and so on. You know, we just got carried away and had great fun finding words to, um, to match wow. Some other wows for me were Yvette, Bishop Yvette Flunder of the Fellowship of Affirming Ministries, keynote speaker Jean Houston, who I, I went to greet, and I said, hello, I'm John Scott, and we, I met you, and she said, at the University of the West Indies in 1989, at a workshop I did there, I said, wow. <laughs> I must have made an impression. Um, Austin Bickers film, which we will show, share with you next uh, Sunday at 6.30. Um, so there were many, many, many high points for me. But perhaps the highest point, the biggest wow for me, happened the day before the conference started. And this is a, it's a, it's a reminder for me of how powerful our teaching is. On the Saturday, remember the conference opened on Sunday. On the Saturday evening before it opened, the Leadership Council for Sp Centers for Spiritual Living went into every room which we were going to be using at the conference. And the entire committee did a chamber of prayer. A chamber of prayer is a prayer in which each person praise out loud their own treatment all at once. And it's very, very powerful. It creates this energy in the room of everybody praying simultaneously. And it was so powerful. And so that every single room in, that every workshop was being held in and the meetings got a chamber of prayer from the leadership council. Isn't that a wow thing to do? Yeah. And I had learned from Reverend Elma years ago that another wow practice is when you enter a hotel room to do a prayer, to bless the people who are there before you, and to, to consecrate it for your own living space, and before you leave, to do a prayer as you are leaving for the people who come after you. And so that was something I did. I left at 3.45 in the morning, and I left my roommate fast asleep. He kept opening his hand saying, you gone yet? You know, and I said, no, I'm still here. But just before I left, I did this wonderful um, treatment very short, too, and I just thought, yes, this closes the conference for me. But I returned home, and several people have talked about lessons from nature. And the whole idea of a world of wonder was confirmed for me by, of all things, my neighbor's cats. She has two, a pure white diva who disdains to speak to people of color like me, and a tiny marmalade colored, very friendly puss, which comes readily to me. Her friendliness evidently extends to every male suitor because she became pregnant at her first heat and has had a litter every heat thereafter. Her owners call her Sketel, <laughs> which, as those of you who are familiar with Jamaican parlance will recognize, is a pejorative used for ladies of easy virtue. 
As the story goes, the white princess somehow succumbed to the charms of a wandering Tom and became pregnant. Skatel, true to form, was pregnant too. Well, on my return from Orlando, my neighbor shared that when the white cat went into labor and delivered her first kitten, as an inexperienced mother, she didn't know what to do and she started freaking out, literally. Skatel, seeing what was happening, came over, cleaned up the newborn kitten herself, and gently pushed it towards its mother. Skatel then stayed by the white cat's side as she delivered her entire litter. And it wasn't until she had delivered that Skatel went off and had her own brood. Since then, my neighbor says both cats take turns feeding the entire litter. Isn't that just an amazing wow? It occurs to me then, friends, that Skatel's labor of love was another wow, a work of wonder that came naturally to her. It was done without fanfare and bright lights, but it was miraculous and divine nevertheless. It reminded me too that each of us here is here on a divine assignment, that we can and have to do a work of wonder that is ours to do, uniquely ours to do and we come fully equipped to accomplish it, no matter how difficult our labor may seem. Dr. Ernest Holmes, who gave the world this wonderful teaching known as Science of Mind, writes in his book, This Thing Called You, and I quote, create or perish is the eternal mandate of nature. Be constructive or become frustrated is an equal demand. You cannot escape the conclusion that whatever this thing is which is seeking expression through everything, it can find satisfactory outlet only through constructive and life-giving creativeness. Each of us comes as a, a complete package with all that we need to do the work that we are here to do. Which reminds me to remind you that this book, the th this thing called you, is the one we, we wish to give to participants in our correctional ministry at the General Penitentiary in Kingston. Reverend Michael Record and I have a new group of students, and we need to order 20 copies of the book at approximately $1,200 each. So please consider supporting our work by contributing to the purchase of these books. If you are so minded, you can just leave an envelope at the office clearly marked for the outreach ministry or simply marked books, and we will use that towards purchasing, ordering the books from um, abroad. But now I'd like to get back to the wow that is your divine assignment. Let us affirm together, I am the wow in a world of wonder. Together, I am the wow in a world of wonder. To your neighbor say, you are the wow in a world of wonder, namaste. You are the wow in a world of wonder, namaste. I said to your neighbor, not the whole place. And this brings me to your assignment. Did you miss the assignments when I was away? Lie you are tell. <laughs> Who said no? God bless you. Your assignment, should you decide to undertake it, is to do some visioning for yourself today. Take some time to become still this afternoon. Sit with paper and pen at hand and take three deep centering breaths. And then ask this question of spirit. What is spirit's highest idea of the wow, the work of wonder that I am here to do. What is spirit's highest idea of the wow, that is the work of wonder, that I am here to do? Jot down anything at all that comes to you and then go back again within, breathe deeply again and ask a second question. What do I have to be or become in order to accomplish my wow? What do I have to be or to become in order to accomplish my wow, my work of wonder? 
Again, jot down anything that surfaces for you and become still once more for the final question. What must I release and let go in order to deliver the wow waiting to be born by means of me? What must I release or let go in order to deliver the wow, the work of wonder that is waiting to be born by means of me? So here are your three questions. What is spirit's highest idea of the work of wonder I'm here for? What do I have to be or become in order to accomplish it? And what do I have to release or let go so that it can be born through me and bless my world? That's your assignment for today. For friends, each of us brings the wow to life in our own unique way. No one can be the wow for you. This Wednesday, being Ash Wednesday, we will be exploring seven steps to cosmic consciousness. That's a rather highfalutin way of saying we'll be looking at how we can practice the presence of the spirit in every domain of our lives until our whole being is flooded with its light. The psalmist writes, and I quote, Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. And he continues later, if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me. And he concludes with one of my favorite lines. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Even the night shall be filled with light, the light of the radiance, the light in that wonderful epigraph on Sandra Cooper's uh, treatment in your program this morning that makes you a stained glass window jeweled and glowing from within that just beautifies the entire world. Truly, we are God's wow, God's wonder of wonders, exuding the wonder of wholeness. And so I know for each of you a week of wonder. Let us together say, it is a law of my life together it is a that wherever I go, the way shall be prepared before me. That wherever I go, the way shall be prepared before me. I walk the way of wonder. I walk the way of wonder. My life is wonderful and wonder-filled. Life is wonderful and so it is. Namaste.